Martin Creed is a philosophical cerebral artist of great renown who works across many mediums, sculpture, painting, film, music, and dance. He's best known in Vancouver for his 75-foot neon sentiment, Everything is Going to Be All Right, which is installed at the Wing Sang building that houses the Rennie Art Collection in Chinatown. Everything Creed conceives and exhibits receives a number, and some of his work causes heated debate. It is my pleasure to welcome Martin Creed to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hi. Nice to meet Hi. you. All right. Hi. You know, when I see that wonderful neon work of yours at the, at the uh, Wing Sang building, it says everything is going to be all right. The first question that comes to my mind is, but what is all right? <laughs> I don't know. I think I just want to feel better, mm -hmm. better than I do. You know, that's, I think that's why I work, just to try to feel better. And, and I usually don't feel good. So all right is better than that. You got that right. <laughs> and as you know, some people, uh, when they saw that, said, everything's not all right. What does he mean everything's going to be all right? It's not all right. Oh, yeah. And others of us who are the uh, more positive types said, yay, I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, yeah. that everything's going to be all right. Uh, your birthplace, born in England, raised mm. in Glasgow, went to Scotland. Yeah. Uh, why did you go to Scotland? My dad got a job in Glasgow, uh, working at Glasgow School of Art. Oh. And uh, so my parents moved to Scotland when I was three. Is your dad an um, artist? Yeah, he's a craftsman, yeah, artist. And mm. He was a silversmith, and now he does kind of blacksmithing. Mm. And what about mom? She's a physiotherapist. So the physiotherapist and the artist spawned yeah. you. <laughs> and when did you know that uh, your imagination had to be fired and that you needed to do art? You needed to use that gift in many <laughs> different ways. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. When I, when I was a teenager, I wasn't sure. I, I was interested in literature and uh, art and music. Mm. Sports? Um, and sport too, yeah. I did rugby mm. and football. But, um, so I wasn't sure what to, I wanted to study at university. And, but in the end, it seemed like it was easy to decide because it seemed like, it, because it seemed like the study of art didn't narrow things down too much. In other words, art could contain all the other things, mm -hmm. but the other things didn't necessarily contain art. So studying art was like just a chance to kind of do what I wanted. Really. Sure, why not? How is art like your music and how is your music like your art? How are they connected or yeah. are they connected? Yeah, no, it's, well to me they're the same thing. I can't, mm. I can't separate what I see from what I hear. And that's why I try to work on things to listen to as well as to look at, you know? Yes. Like, you know, when you look at a painting, you know, you know you, um, you're always hearing something. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to something, you're always seeing something. Yes. So it seems impossible to separate the, mm -hmm. the two. Or you're so. remembering something, and it's very individual, as you know. Uh, you, uh, I look at a Martin Creed work or a painting, and I have a certain feeling, and the person next to me has yeah. a different feeling. Our imagination is fired, but in different ways. Uh, take me to the Tate uh, Gallery, the prestigious gallery in London, yeah. when you won uh, the Turner Prize for, uh, was it called Lights On, Lights Off? Yeah, the lights going on and off. The yeah. lights going on and off. So you have a big empty room, Yeah. and the lights flick on and off, mm. and there it is. What did it mean to you? What was it about to you? Um, it, to, to me, it was about doing something that I was happy with or felt okay about. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't sure whether, whether I wanted to have the lights on or off. So I thought if I switch them on and off, I can um, be happy because um, I can have both of them. Okay, <laughs> so you didn't have to make a decision, essentially. No, exactly, yeah. So and they I, could be I, on or off. And, <laughs> and nobody told you. We always remember a parent who said, turn the lights out. Yeah. Uh, you think you were, you know, born in a barn, close the door. Didn't we all grow, I don't know if your parents yeah, exactly, yeah. said that exactly, yeah. No, my dad to always told me to switch off the 
lights, you know, like if I went to the toilet and came back and he found mm -hmm. the light was on, he would tell me off yes. for leaving the light on. And yeah, who left the light I, on? That's why in my flat now, I, I always leave the lights on in the toilet and <laughs> other rooms and it annoys me when people come around and switch the lights really? off. So yeah. it's a little rebellion in you, isn't it? But uh, 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 there was an artist, I can't remember who it was, and I read this, I hope it's true, who threw eggs at the wall oh, yeah. at the Turner when you yeah. mounted that, uh, it, does it called mounting when it's that kind of yeah. work? Or, yeah, install or install. mount or show. So when you did the empty rooms with the yeah. lights on and off, there was somebody who didn't like it and she yeah. threw eggs or something at the wall? Yeah. Really? Exactly. She did throw eggs at the wall. <laughs> mm. And the tabloids loved She's, that. Yeah. What was that about? Did you figure it out? Well, I imagine it must have got under her skin, you know. Mm -hmm. to, uh, well, I think the best things in life get under people's skin, mm -hmm. truly. Uh, like, a little bit. Uh, I don't mean mean and awful things, <laughs> but something that causes you to think or ponder. Yeah. What is uh, it about your love of, uh, perhaps it's logic and numbers, but you number all your works, mm -hmm. and you started with, number three instead of number one your first work was called number three yeah why because when i decided to number the work it was because i wasn't happy with titles i felt like titles mm. for works so i just didn't like them i yeah, i felt like a title was like trying to pin down the work to try to give it a meaning you know right and so i thought that if I numbered my works, then it would be a way of just not having, not needing to title them. Okay, so and they so, have no titles. No, they, well, some do. Some do, no. But they don't all have, and they don't need to have, because they all mm. have a number. And when I went, and so then I went back and looked at my old works that I'd made, and I gave them all a number. And then I felt really self-conscious about that, because I thought that, um, how can I have a first work how can I have a work number one you know so I thought I can't uh, I can't do that so I thought I'd just try and kind of fade it in I see so you faded in with number three three because and then five and seven and it'd then. be a bit arrogant to start with number one yeah. especially if it wasn't number one was number well, three I, I actually I your first have, um <laughs> no well I don't know well I don't really know my mm. it's I mean these th these things are only what I think is my right. work which Okay. It's not necessarily... So it's not important. <laughs> it's just not important. In, in your neon work, uh, the everything uh, will be all right, you had shorter yeah. ones. Didn't you have one that says, says, don't panic? Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. Don't worry or um, uh, feelings. Just feelings. And just feelings. Yeah. Mm. And if somebody wanted to purchase, and I know this is a bit of a ru uh, rude question, Oh, yeah. uh, wanted no, to not, purchase no. uh, tens of thousands of pounds to purchase a Martin Creed work today. Is it? Yeah. No, it, I, I hear tell. <laughs> I hear tell. I, oh yeah. I think Ooh. my work's quite cheap. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, easy for you to say. But take me back to your Quaker beginnings because yeah. you were raised in a Quaker family, and the this the the uh, the simple truths in Quakerism and the. The simplicity, I, I, really. I think I was very influenced by Quakerism. Mm. My mom and dad were are Quakers, and they, they used to go to Quaker meeting every Sunday, and mm -hmm. I would go. And and, um, and I and I think Quakers Quakerism is brilliant. You know, the idea of uh, going to a room and not doing anything, you know, mm -hmm. for one hour. You know? Yes, and, <laughs> and the uh, idea that Richard Nixon's family yeah. was a were Quakers. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think I didn't well. Know that. Who knew? <laughs> now, I know, I know I like, you. I don't want to be like him. <laughs> no, but, I don't think you are, or were. Uh, but the thinking, not thinking thing, uh, the flickering lights. Uh, you, when mm. you do music, mm. or put together a video of sorts, and we have an example of one called "Thinking, Not Thinking." Uh -huh. Tell me a little bit about it before we see it. Ah, oh, um, well, I was trying to write a song about my life, you know, and I was trying to d say what I understood to be happening, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, then, and it seems to me that, that you know, that, that life is, you can divide it up into the time when you're aware of what you're doing and the other time when you're not aware of what you're doing, you know, in other words, when you're thinking and when you're not thinking. Right. And, and it seems like life, like the thinking side of life is, an, is a desperate attempt to control the 
uncontrollable, mm. not thinking side of life. Okay, and so <laughs> the intuitive side perhaps, or the monkey brain you have when you're, you're thinking, you're, yeah. well, there's like a tape going around in your head, or you think an evil thought, and then you think, when you're on your thinking side, I shouldn't have thought that. Aye. Well, I don't know. Exactly, something like that, yeah. I mean, I, but I think that life and work, you know, is a desperate attempt to try to, um, you know, um, come to terms with all the stuff that comes out of you, you know, mm -hmm. horrible feelings and, like, and, and the things you find yourself doing right. almost with n not within your own control, you know. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, for, uh, Jung would say, we must embrace our dark side. Aye, I think so, yeah. However, uh, let's just see a, a little uh, piece of the thinking, not thinking. So, explain this. <laughs> that was an Irish wolfhound and uh, a long-legged chihuahua. chihuahua. Should have been a short-legged chihuahua. I really <laughs> Couldn't <laughs> find one? Really? Uh, so we had to make do with that long-legged right. one. Right, and what did it mean to you that the uh, Irish wolfhound meant... He represents not thinking. Not thinking. So any time the lyrics say not thinking, the big dog comes on mm -hmm. and lumbering across the screen. I see. And then um, the little dog represents thinking. In other words, desperately trying to control right. an uncontrollable right. situation. And when you're little, sometimes you have to do more of that. Aye, aye. More thinking when you're little. Exactly. To survive. Yeah, I think it's hard well, work. Well, I might have made that up, but we'll come back <laughs> and talk more with Martin Creed.